Welcome back to That Bee Man's Bed Build. There's a mouthful. I've got all the plywood cut up. I've got all the dados cut. I've got all the grooves cut. I've got the plywood stained. Plywood stained. And I've actually set up here to run the uh, rabbits through the table saw. So I'm so happy about that. I hate doing grooves and dados with the router. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's very inaccurate. Table saw is so accurate. It's beautiful. So let me dive right in and I'll show you this setup I have here. I've run a test piece already and uh, it is bang on. So welcome. Stick around. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, the magic happens right here. This is a dado blade. And I apologize if I have any European viewers. You uh, may not have access to this kind of thing. Um, and for the North American viewers, these are outlawed in Europe because uh, the governing bodies uh, assume that they're too dangerous for a European to use. I don't ascribe to that. They're fine with the appropriate uh, procedures and safety precautions. For one thing, you see this throat plate. This is a throat plate that comes out so that I can I can change the blade. That's red, and that's red for a reason. That's that's blood. <laughs> it's not blood, but it's red because if you get your fingers closer than that, then expect to see blood. Okay? So the point is don't ever get your fingers closer than that to that blade. Okay? And that's why it's red. That danger. Red is danger. So a dado blade is, is just a blade uh, with certain segments and it's made so that you can make it wider. And what's happened here is I've sunk this dado blade into the side of this fence. I can take this off. I built this box, I'll call it. It's an MDF box. It just sits on my my fence on my saw. It's very tight on there. Nothing special, just a box. But I built it very precise so that it would slide over that fence and remain tight. And it remains tight, I'll tell you that. See, I've used it a lot and I've, I've done this dado thing a lot so I've run the dado blade in there goes right back on that and it's stuck right there can't take it off easily all right so what I've done here is this is my test piece this is my test piece and I have to run two sizes of rabbits this is a rabbit and this is a rabbit silly rabbits one of my rabbits is 11 sixteenths wide, the other one is three quarter wide. And that's because I'm I'm doing this on my on my end pieces of my cabinets. So this end piece sits up sits up like this. The bottom of the cabinet is 11 sixteenths uh, oak, and the top of the cabinet is three quarter inch spruce. <laughs> it is what it is. So that's why I'm doing that. I've in fact already cut the three quarter inch size and it is bang on. Hopefully you can see this. So this is my 11 sixteenths oak and this is my 11 sixteenths rabbit. And I don't know how well you can see that. But that is bang on. Okay. And then the other side of this fits my three-quarter spruce, like that. That one maybe feels just a touch shy, but that's okay. So all these pieces need to be cut. I have three pieces of oak and one piece of spruce to cut. I've cut the three-quarter inch dado already, and uh, I've, I've even got it marked here, 11 sixteenths. 
data in this side. Okay, so we're going to bring these over, flip them over. Now this is a little bit difficult because it's a long piece. So I, I don't have any support in the back here. I have to be careful. But what I need to do is I also need to keep down pressure on the workpiece so that the dado depth is going to be correct and uniform. Okay. So that is what I'm going to do. doing what's called a dry fit and it's called a dry fit because uh, we don't have any glue yet uh, we want to make sure the parts fit together properly we want to make sure we have a process uh, to get the parts together properly uh, get the parts assembled in the right order and to be able to clamp the parts uh, well enough for the glue to adhere do its job here I'm using I'm using screws and I'm pre-drilling these screws partly because I don't want to split my bottom bolt plywood and partly so that the drilled hole then will locate the screw because I've got it nicely flushed on the end and then once the screws are drilled then uh, they will align that panel just right once I have glue. The process is <clears throat> to install the outside panels first. Install this is the this is the foot of the bed. So I'll install the outside panels first. And then I'll install the center one. And the reason for that method is that when I install this center one I want to make sure that the top of the center one is aligned with the bottom of my rabbit here so that it goes straight across because I've got a, a piece of lumber a piece of plywood to go straight across here so if there's anything out of whack with this dado depth this groove depth uh, in relation to the height of that panel then I can possibly Fix my mistake, fix the discrepancy, however you want to look at that. Uh, so I'm going to get these screwed on. This one here is a bit different. It's going to be more difficult. I may pin nail it. I don't have trim planned for the footboard and therefore I don't want to run screws through that. Uh, so I need to come up with a different plan. I may be able to simply clamp it. That doesn't locate parts very well and they tend to slip. So I'll figure that out and decide what I'm going to do. I could pin it and clamp it, just pin it to locate it and then clamp it to uh, give me the 
the glue clamping pressure I need. But I'm going to go ahead with that one because I think that's working out really, really well. I'll run a bead of glue in there and then I'll screw that on. And we'll have our first part, our first two pieces assembled. This is exciting stuff. I think it is. <laughs> I'm using inch and half screws. Typically the rule of thumb is to use a screw that's twice as thick as your material. That's not a hard and fast rule, but it is what it is. You do what seems to work well for you and you do what makes you feel good. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of these pilot holes. So I've got a neat little bit here. This drills a pilot hole for the screw. It doesn't drill at full depth. I don't want it full depth, but I want a little bit of a pilot. Then it drills a little bit bigger hole here for the shank of the screw so that the screw doesn't uh, pull up on the first uh, layer of material. Then it drills a small chamfer uh, recess for the head of the screw. I don't want much of a recess. I don't really need any recess. To be honest, in plywood, a recess is not really necessary. A recess is necessary when you're drilling that into hardwood. And you say, well, it's hardwood. Well, it's not really, it's plywood. Hardwood lumber is what I mean. So I just drill those so that, that recess part just touches the surface and then I back out. And that's that. Now I can take the screws out that I have there, run a bead of glue and put those back in and that should be perfect. I tend to make a lot of mistakes in this sort of thing so I've marked them all with top and bottom. I marked that one with foot. I'm using Tight Bond Original Glue. This is not a promotion. It is just uh, simply a mention of a glue that works well for me. This is not Tight Bond's waterproof glue, which I use for my beekeeping equipment. actually really rigid there which is nice very nice to see and this may be hard to see and get perspective too I flipped this up on its side so the piece I'm attaching is on the top I've got a spreader clamp in the middle there holding that that piece up and then I have three clamps holding it tight to the bottom and then I'm about to drive some pin nails through here just to uh, you see how it's not together here so that needs to be tight so the glue takes it's hard to hard to video as I do that but that's what I'm doing you know what they say about clamps same rule applies to clamps that applies to fish and tackle and bacon. You can have not enough and you can have enough. But you can't have too many. And these 
long clamps. You don't use them very often, but when you need a clamp that long, you sure are the deal. These long ones are real expensive. They only have four. It's really hard to get such a big project and a big person in a shot in such a small shop. Uh, so <clears throat> what I've got here is this glue has dried for a few hours and these, uh, these sides of the cabinet are nicely secured. Next order of business is to put this, in, this middle divider in here. And what I want to do is in order to, to clamp that, is I want to drive I want to drive screws through the back here the bottom this is the bottom and in order to know where to drive those screws I'm going to draw a line on the bottom to the bottom here I can see a line maybe I'll forego the first six inches which is the only part that you could possibly see and I'll drive the, draw that line and I'll actually drill a few pilot holes and uh, then, then I'll glue that groove and push that panel into it and drive some screws. Hope that all works. Very big project and it's very tough to handle sometimes. So in order to do that I'm going to lay this down again. Upside down. So the cabinet is upside down now. I'm going to use this divider as my straight edge just like I was when I was routing that groove. So I'll just clamp it. I'm going to eyeball the center of that divider. Don't need to don't need to get the ruler out for this. <clears throat> Draw a bit of a line with my pencil just to make sure I can follow something when I drive screws. glue on the sides. So I'm going to run the glue on the sides. And then I'll throw some glue in the bottom. consideration is to get flush here. And I test fit this so I know it goes in there and that is flush right there. So now I can drive a screw up from the bottom.
There are three of these pieces of plywood in each cabinet. Uh, these are just structural supports uh, that can be added now and then I still have openings here to assemble it when I get it in the house and for finishing, spraying the cubbies and whatnot. Incidentally, I, I keep calling this spruce plywood. This is actually Douglas fir plywood. It's quite nice. You can sure smell it when you cut it. But this grade of plywood is called F SPF, Spruce Pine Fir. Uh, so it's kind of the same sort of thing. They're very similar in, you know, uh, weight and, and rigidity characteristics. So regardless, this is a three quarter inch. I'm going to put the end ones in. And again, this is the foot of the bed. It's not the footboard, but it's the foot end of the cabinet. And I don't want to drive a bunch of screws through here. So that'll be glued, and I'll tack nail that. And then I'll clamp the whole thing overnight. Uh, but I'll glue and screw that in. But I'm not going to put the middle one in. The dividers need to go in here before the middle uh, support goes in. So just some glue. It's not rocket surgery at this point. You don't want too much. You don't want glue running all the way down there. You can glue that if you want. I don't think I'm going to glue that one. I'll just screw that down. This one definitely the glue is going to be the chief attachment method. Those little tack nails are going to do nothing but just keep it from sliding around. see the glue pop out a little bit when I pull the trigger, so that's good to know. My pins are actually serving the purpose. This is where the dividers come in, and these are not going to fit. They need to be trimmed. Just kind of getting an eyeball. See, they're, they're too high and they're too long. I didn't run a, a dado in the bottom here for this divider to go into. That just makes for an absolute hellish assembly. And it doesn't really buy me that much. The purpose of these dividers is to add structural uh, rigidity to these dividers here, uh, to side to side. I mean, those are pretty rigid side to side now, but 
Uh, that's really the purpose of these. And to keep your little cubby, your little bin from sliding all the way through the other side where you can't reach it. I just set it on my glasses. I did. But they survived. I think you might like to see the changeover on this saw stop table saw. If you don't know saw stop, uh, saw stop is an extremely high quality table saw. I'm blessed to own it. And what is unique about saw stop table saw is that it has a blade break technology. So that means is under normal operating circumstances if the saw were running and I were to touch that with my hand the saw blade would stop and disappear and I would most likely incur little more than a cut on my finger it may or may not even bleed it would be so mild and I know that from people sharing their experience with touching their blade Some people call the saw stop the hot dog saw. <laughs> because when the salespeople demonstrate the blade break technology, they run a hot dog on a piece of wood through into the blade and it fires the cartridge and stops the blade. And then you can inspect the damage to the hot dog which is very little you pay a lot for that but the resulting injuries I've seen people sustain from a table saw are just catastrophic You can always get the tough guys. Oh, I don't need that. I'm careful. Oh, good. It's good you're careful. Everybody needs to be careful. Some of us just, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you just have a, just a moment of inattention. They say that table saw accidents happen in the first year or after the first 10. You're either a rookie or you're one of those guys who knows it all and is quote careful so that is, that's the dado blade this here take that out and that's the blade break okay so that sits in there like that the blade runs past it here and when uh, you touch the blade there's an extremely strong spring in here that uh, then a lot is allowed to push that aluminum brake the gap is 1 16th to 3 30 seconds so extremely tight gap there and that blade runs into that and it stops the mandrel pivots and drops below the table surface and I've had mine trip and I'll tell you it's weird it doesn't really scare you so much as it's just weird because it just goes bang and then everything is quiet and just about that fast. The blade disappears and the saw shuts off and comes to a stop and it's quiet and you just <laughs> think, what was that? That's weird. Well, that was the sound of $200 leaving your pocket is what that was. So the dado blade one is wider than the standard one. So that's why I need to change this little bit of debris on it so you need to change it between uh, 
standard blade and data blade plus the fact that data blades are uh, 8 inches standard blades are 10 inches in diameter so they're very different and no the saw won't run with the cartridge not in place so there's a little key I can put my riving knife back in that's a very very important safety feature right there keeps the wood from binding at the back of the blade I'll get my nice plywood blade here and I don't know if you can really see that but I'll turn it toward you the teeth on this it's a double bevel and it's quite aggressive too extremely sharp so there's one tooth beveled this way, another tooth beveled that way. So when it cuts, it cuts in a V-shape. And uh, it's really good for plywood. It does a really nice job. Cuts extremely well. And I know, you, know, you always get the comment that that's nice, but I can't afford that. Uh, and I totally get that. I can't afford a lot of stuff either. It just comes down to where your biggest pain points are and, you know, working away at those. Somebody who doesn't do as much woodworking as I do, maybe can say, well, you can't justify as many thousands of dollars for saw stop. Uh, this is a special situation though why I got this I won't go into that but I'm sure glad I have it it's a huge blast run my blade depth not very high just above the material half an inch or so okay. so I'll stop has a safety switch so I have to turn the master on and wait for the brake cartridge to initialize I think what it's doing is it's charging a giant capacitor in there. And it's ready. Turn the I don't think I could have gotten that any more perfect for height. Okay, I need to cut it. I need to cut it to length now. Okay, to be certain that my distance between here and here is uh, correct, I've got this piece clamped in here. Uh, it wasn't far off, but it was up, splayed out a little bit. Now I've got this cut. Cut this divider to width and length. And I have a little bit of a difficulty because I'm putting dividers end to end here. I've driven screws in to hold this one in, but I can't drive screws the other way now. I could have offset these dividers so that I could screw them in. Uh, that really wouldn't have mattered because my bins that I'm putting in here, I don't think they bought them out anyway. But regardless, I'll uh, glue this, clamp it, and it should be just fine. This end I can screw in. Actually, this end I can't screw in because this is the foot of the bed. This is the part I'm going to see. So I'm just going to pin that. And this one will be held in by glue.
it's that far. That's why you don't like to do rabbits with a rubber. Just never quite right. brings an end to today's installment of the bed build. I'm extremely pleased how this went. It wasn't without challenges, but uh, it went really well. I'm pleased with progress. My next step is to do this whole thing again with the other cabinet. The only thing left on this cabinet really is uh, putting this center switcher thing in and uh, then we can move on to the second cabinet. It's slightly smaller but not smaller enough that it's going to make much difference. And we'll do all of this again. Once that's done the really fun part starts and that's making all the trim for the edges. Uh, I actually really like that work. It's very precise and I get to work with oak lumber which I love working with oak lumber. So anyway, you'll, you'll see what I come up with for trim pieces on this. So I hope you're enjoying the build. Uh, I'd like to get on to some other beekeeping related woodworking. Uh, but you know, it's fun to build stuff regardless. It's problem solving. It's, you know, how are you going to do this and how are you going to do that? It's, uh, it's interesting that way. So I hope you're enjoying it and uh, tune in again. Watch the next uh, installment of the bed build. It won't be long. Take care. Have fun.